Father Cedric Bizania, the host of Live with Passion, I welcome you to the program. My great call as a Catholic priest is to help people receive the Holy Spirit. That's why whenever I preach a parish mission, which we're about to go to in Orlando, Florida, I always conclude with a Mass of the Holy Spirit because I want people to receive the Holy Spirit. It says in the Acts of the Apostles that when Peter was preaching, the Spirit fell upon the listeners. And I pray that as you watch this program, the Holy Spirit will fall upon you. Let's go to the live preaching. On the last and greatest day of a Jewish festival, Jesus stood up and he cried out, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within the person who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Holy Spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. The Gospel of the Lord. I grew up Catholic and I was baptized as an infant and I was going to be confirmed in the eighth grade. And I remember our confirmation ceremony and right before that, of course, they teach you about the Holy Spirit and they show you these tongues of fire over the apostles' heads. And they said, you know, during your confirmation ceremony, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will come down in power and you will be filled with the fire. So I thought to myself, I'm in eighth grade. I'm thinking, you know, good, because I haven't felt anything yet, and uh, I want to feel this. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe I ought to wear an asbestos suit or something to the ceremony because the fire is going to fall. So the place where I grew up, a little town, uh, actually a suburb of Agawam, it was called Feeding Hills. And I went to Sacred Heart Church there in Feeding Hills. Probably about 30 of us eighth graders were about to be confirmed. And we had the altar rail back then, and here comes the Bishop of Springfield, Mass. He's all dressed in red. He has a big red miter, and, you know, he's going to do the confirmation ceremony. So we're all kneeling there, and here's all these little eighth graders, boys and girls, and I'm among them, and we're all praying for the Holy Spirit. So at that time, this is the way the Bishop did the ceremony. He would come and give you a slap in the face. So I guess that meant that you are a mature Christian adult or something like that. So he comes to me and he gives me a slap in the face and then he moves on to the next person and I went like this. <laughs> I looked at the person next to me and they didn't look like they had felt anything either. I felt a slap in the face and that was it. And I go, wait a minute, what's going on here? They told me I was going to receive the Holy Spirit, that there was going to be this big power, this fire, and I don't feel anything. I thought this, either one, there's something wrong with me, I'm a misfit or something uh, spiritually, or number two, maybe there's no God. And that's why I think a lot of our teenagers fall away from the church. They either think something's wrong with them, or maybe there's no God, you know, because we were just born into Catholicism. And I began to watch people like Billy Graham on TV and saw the movie Jesus of Nazareth on TV, made a big impact on me. And I started searching for God. I remember reading the Bible, ask and you shall receive, knock and the door will be opened, seek and you will find. And so I began searching and praying, believing, thirsting, as Jesus said in the gospel, anyone who thirsts, come to me and drink and out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. And I wanted that. I wanted to know God if he was real and true. I really wanted to know. Well, one night, about three months after I started searching, I had what I hoped I would get at my confirmation. And, you know, there's many words to describe this in the Bible. They were filled with the Holy Spirit or they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember what John the Baptist said? He said, I baptize you with water but one is coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So think about what baptism is, full immersion, where you're dunked into the water and you come out sopping wet. And that's what baptism in the Spirit is. You, you are immersed in God. We are in Christ, the Bible says. So there's all kinds of different words, filled, baptized. I like the word, a release of the Spirit. And I go like this because Jesus said in the gospel, out of your heart, will flow rivers of living water. So I want you to picture something. It's not so much that the Spirit comes down as the Spirit is already present, 
because the Spirit of God fills the entire earth, and you already have the Spirit. And this is something I discovered. The Spirit was already there. The Holy Spirit was already in me. I just didn't know it. And I had to have a discovery, a new consciousness, a release of the Holy Spirit. So all of you, and all of you watching by TV, you have the Spirit within you. I'm going to try to help you to receive the Spirit and to have a new release of the Spirit within you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you can be filled over and over and over again. Well, needless to say, this changed my life. I was revolutionized by the presence of God in me, this glorious foretaste of what is to come in heaven, this assurance of salvation. It's called the uh, down payment of what is to come, the foretaste. And that's how you can know that you're saved, because you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Gospel of John tells us, that eternal life is now. That eternal life begins with your life with God, and even death can't take it away. It just continues after death. So my life was revolutionized, and I began to, what I call, have a personal relationship with God. God was no longer distant, and I hope that God exists out there somewhere but rather God was present to me and it was intimate and real and personal and deep. And I was never a very spiritual person. I went from being a misfit to a mystic, if that makes any sense. There was something very real going on and powerful. So the number one reason why the Holy Spirit comes, and I'll, I'll share some more here in a minute, but I want you to get that the number one reason is so that you can have something personal with God. And again, the Spirit is in all of us. The Spirit is in all of you watching on TV. It's just a matter of having a, an awakening and a filling and a release of this glorious Holy Spirit. So I began to ha have a new prayer life. The scriptures came alive and things started happening in my life. And this is where I wanna go with the rest of my talk. What started to happen to me is what Joel proclaimed in the first reading. Your young people will have visions, and your older people will dream dreams. I was studying business. I was in college. My dream, my vision, was just to make a lot of money. I was studying business, thinking that, you know, the American dream, you go through college, you get a job, you make some money, you have a family, and that's the American dream. So that was kind of my dream. But other than that, I really didn't have any motivation. But when the Spirit came, all of a sudden, I had a new dream and a new vision. And I always tell people, you're never too old to dream a dream, and you're never too young to have a vision. And my dream was this, that since I encountered God's love, and I encountered God in a real way, I suddenly began to have the desire to want to tell people about this, to want to preach. Now, this is something new for me, because remember, I had fallen away from the church. I was never even an altar boy growing up, and all of a sudden, now I want to preach? So this is something that I never, ever thought I would want to even ever do. And you have to understand something about me, too. You've been with me for three days now. Very insecure, very struggle with self-image and self-esteem. I had panic attacks in front of people. It's like, I, I want to preach, but I'm, I'm scared. So I don't know if this is God or this is me or what it is. But anyway, so I start being led by the Holy Spirit. Remember how we began Lent? Jesus was driven by the Spirit into the desert. And so I've discovered that the Spirit can actually help you and drive you and lead you and guide you in your life. You don't have to just go on your own thoughts, your own feelings, that actually the Spirit of God will actually drive you and lead you and guide you. So I began to be led and I discerned a call, a call to priesthood, a call to religious life, and I said yes to that. The Spirit was leading me even further and I trusted that this dream of preaching was God's will for my life, even though, again, never trained in speaking. I didn't do all that well. It, my, uh, we had that speaking class in high school, didn't really do, I think I got a C minus in it because, you know, I just wasn't really motivated about anything. So anyway, I end up at a place called the Catholic Theological Union in Chicago. This is our seminary in Chicago. 
where you're trained theologically and trained in preaching. And so here I was with my little dream to preach and to proclaim to people all about the Holy Spirit, about God and personal relationship with God being saved. And so I end up at this place, well, little did I know, but it was a very high-powered theology seminary. People there had written many books, they were published, they were sought after speakers, they had all these initials after their name, that's how you can tell people are important, they have a lot of initials after their name. And uh, there were canon lawyers, there were liturgists, there were ethicists, there was formation directors, scripture scholars. In fact, one of the scripture scholars, one of our teachers, edited the New American Catholic Bible. He had his name right on the front of the Bible. That's very popular, maybe some of you have it. The New American Bible, and he has his name right on the front. I was always under the impression that God wrote the Bible. Now I'm discovering that these are the type of people that we had at our seminary. So here comes me with my little old dream and vision that I'm gonna be a priest and, and preach the gospel the best I can. And I really believe to a lot of people. So I get there to the seminary and little did I know that once a semester, the seminarians would preach. I knew that one day I would preach, but I didn't know it was gonna be right away. And guess who you preach in front of? All the uh, scripture scholars and the ethicists and the theologians and the canon lawyers and your peers. And so it was a small chapel with about 100 people in the round and very up close. The front pew here would have been about the middle of the whole thing. And I remember, you know, you don't get to pick your scriptures when you preach. And so now here's one of my first times to get up there in front of all these people. And you know, you want to impress them and make them think that you're going to be great and all that kind of a thing. But remember, I have a lot of insecurities. And I have a lot of fears. Still got that in me. So I get up there and uh, I found out what the scripture was going to be that I was going to preach on. And by the way, they allow you to proclaim it as well as preach it. Even though you're a seminarian, they let you read the word. We call it proclaiming. And so the scripture was uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 20. And it's the story of the Gadarene demoniac, where Jesus goes across the Sea of Galilee and he meets this crazy man and he frees him and they go into the pigs, all the demons, and here's this man clothed in his right mind. So it's a long gospel, 20 verses. So I get up there and it's my turn. You know, I prepared the best I could. And I get up there in front of all these people and I say, the Lord be with you. And they said, and, and also with you at the time, that's how they said it. And I looked and I said, there, there's my friends and there's the canon lawyer and there's my liturgy teacher, there's the ethicist, there's a the guy that wrote the Bible right there. And you know, they're all there and they're all looking at me and it's too late to turn back now. So I start reading and they teach you, you know, when you read to look at people, that's called proclaiming. You don't look at the text or you have to a little bit, but most of all, you just look at the people and proclaim the word to them. And it's a long gospel, it's 20 verses long about this demon-possessed man. Halfway through, immistakably, couldn't run away from it, I noticed something. I had absolutely 100% no spit. <laughs> I was so scared, I lost it all. It was gone. I still got 10 more verses to go, and I ain't got no spit. <laughs> and all these people are looking at me because I started mispronouncing my words. People say, Father, you have a nice voice. It's very resonant. We love to hear you. Well, something happens when you ain't got no spit. Your, your <laughs> lips stick right there. <laughs> I couldn't get it off either. And every, every word that has an S in it, like Jesus, for example, you say Jesus <laughs> or gospel. I mean, there was so much cotton in my mouth, I could have woven a wardrobe. And I remember at the doing it, people started tilting their heads and saying, you know, is he okay? You know, the guy that wrote the Bible, he was going like this. Because, you know, he was thinking, that ain't any Bible I've ever heard before. So now I've got to preach. How do you preach when you can't pronounce words? It's kind of like running on one leg. 
And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I was in full panic mode, you know, trying to look good. My lips stuck up here. Can't pronounce the word Jesus, so I'm in trouble there. Trying to avoid any word with an S in it. That's not going to happen. I don't even know what I said. I tried to look good. How do you look good when you're like this? <laughs> I finished the homily. I sat down, turned beet red. There's only one door getting out of there. And at the end of the Mass, you know, one of my best friends comes up, Cedric, that was really good. And I go, you liar, that was horrible, and you know it. So I went out, ran down the hall, flopped on my bed. I felt numb. My toes were tingling. And as I laid there, I said, that's it, it's over. I got to go home, tell mom and dad I don't have a call to the priesthood. I don't have a call to preach. I can't even say the word Jesus. I ain't. And as I'm lying there, numb, worst moment of my life, all of a sudden I hear, Cedric, I'm with you. And you know what I thought? Where were you a half hour ago? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you're with me, sure. <laughs> Cedric, don't give up. And I said, I just made a big fool out of myself. It wasn't a loud voice. It was more like a knowing deep inside. Don't give up. Don't quit. I'm with you. It's like, well, I've just been humiliated. How am I going to rebound from this? All the people that mean anything to me, all my teachers, my students, everybody, they all think I'm, they all think I'm the one that was possessed, you know? And it was terrible. Well, I didn't give up, as you can see. You know, we all got to face adversities and trials. And here's what I discovered about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us and in us to help us face our trials and not give up. And we all have to face hard things in life. I've talked to many of you. I mean, some of you have children that have fallen away from the faith. Some of you are dealing with addiction. Some of you are lonely, going through depression. Some of you are grieving. You know, there's all kinds of different things going on. But what I want to tell you is the Spirit is there to help you not to give up to face your adversities, to face your problems. I love what God says in the Bible all the time. He tells Moses, he tells Paul the apostle, he tells the apostles themselves, I am with you. He didn't say he was gonna deliver you from you know, all the adversities, he keeps saying, I am with you. And not just with, in you. In is closer than with. So I've determined that, you know what, sometimes I'm not going to soar like an eagle. If you were here this morning, I talked about how we're eagles. But you know what, I can rebound. I can be resilient because God lives in me. And I am so glad that I did not give up because the Spirit had a plan for my life. And in the same way, the Spirit has a plan in your life. And I have to tell you, again, I was insecure. I was afraid panic attacks, broken. And I love what it says in the scriptures. God chooses the weak and the lowly to shame the strong. And you have to understand, the Spirit of God comes to transform us and to work with us and to work within us, really to make us, to, to bring us to, to greater heights in our life so that we can realize our potential. And I remember, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, that's great for you, Father Cedric. You know, you're on TV and everything. Well, just let me tell you, if you don't feel worthy of the Spirit, let me tell you this. Remember the Samaritan woman at the well? Here's this woman at the well that Jesus just happens to meet, and he sits down, and he starts to talk to her about the living water, about the Holy Spirit. This woman had been divorced five times. And the man that she was living with wasn't her husband. This woman's living in sin, been divorced for five times, and Jesus is offering her the Holy Spirit. So it tells me it's not how good you are, it's how thirsty you are. Anyone who thirsts, let them cry out, and I will give you living water. That means you on television watching. You're hungry. You're thirsty. God is there for you. Be thirsty enough to surrender your life to Christ, and you will have the abundance, the eternal life that you have been searching for. And this is what I discovered as a young man. 
the wonderful Holy Spirit who had always lived in me, but I just didn't know it. There was a, a wonderful release. And so there's a determination and a grace. The Spirit is very gentle, very kind, very loving, but indomitable, ferocious, fierce. It's by the Spirit of God that the world has been turned up di upside down with the gospel. And that same spirit lives in you so that you can face your problems and adversities. So I'm glad I didn't give up because now I know that I'm making a difference. And I'm not trying to, to, of course, blow my own horn. I'm just proclaiming, I'm being a witness about the power of the gospel, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's a little humorous story just to let you know some of what television can do. I was preaching in Naples, Florida, big parish, St. William's down there in Naples. That's southern Florida, southwestern Florida. And I was preaching a mission down there, and this woman shows up at the office that wanted to talk to me. So I went and I talked with her, and this, is, this was her story. She said, Father Cedric, I wanted to come over to meet you. She came from Fort Lauderdale, all the way across Alligator Alley, all the way over just to spend a, a little bit of time, and she wanted to share with me this story. And she said, Father Cedric, she said, I have been suffering with insomnia not just insomnia, chronic insomnia. I haven't been able to sleep. I've been tired and worn out. It's been so terrible for me, so hard for me. I, I'm at the point of suicide. I was willing to end my life. I've been to the finest doctors. They've given me medication. Nothing seemed to work. I was ready to give up. One morning, I was just flipping through the channels, tired, worn out, you know, I been through that before, just looking for something. All of a sudden, you came on, and she said, I listened to you, and it's a miracle. Because of your program, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad that I did not give up. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that because of the Spirit of God, all things are possible. Think of the adversities, the trials in your vocation, and you can do it. I always tell people, dream dreams, see visions, reach for the stars, and at least you'll get the moon. Realize your potential. Live with passion. Be all that you can be. I've had to face my fears. I've had to face adversity. I've had failures and hardships but it's all been worth it. And the Spirit of God will drive you, will push you, will lead you, will guide you, will not let you stay sedentary, but rather will bring you into a life of passion. I want to convince you that the Spirit of God lives in you. That's what Paul told the Corinthian community. He said, don't you know that you are the temple of God, the shrine of God, and that the Spirit of God lives within you? So don't think that the Holy Spirit isn't there for you, or don't think that you're not worthy, nobody is, or don't think that the Holy Spirit is just for religious leaders, it's not. The whole world, God said, I will pour my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your old people will dream dreams, your young people will see visions. So I want to conclude with this little humorous story. It's about this little girl and talking about how God lives in us. This little girl goes to the doctor to get a, just a regular routine checkup. She's six years old. And you know, her mother brings her there and the doctor puts on the stethoscope. He's gonna listen to her heart. To make her feel at ease, he goes, I'm gonna listen for Barney in there. And the little girl says, Barney's not in there. Jesus is in there. Barney's on my underwear. <laughs> I pray that you will realize that the Spirit of God is in you. And for all of you watching on TV, you have been anointed. The Spirit of God is present. You are the temple of God. And because God is here, you can have a personal relationship with God. I pray that you will have an awakening, a release, a filling with the Holy Spirit, right where you are in your homes, right here tonight. 
and you will come into a deep personal relationship with God. And I pray that you will realize the power and the fire and the grace that lives in you so that you will be able to face your adversities, your trials, and your hardships and be more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Dream dreams, see visions, reach for the stars, and become all that you can be. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My heart's desire as a Catholic priest is that you be filled with the Holy Spirit, that you come into a personal relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. When Paul the Apostle went to Athens, Greece, he noticed an inscription that was carved out by the Greeks and it said, to an unknown God. That provoked him. And in many ways that provokes me too because the Holy Spirit has been termed the unknown God in our church. And I want you to know God in a personal way. I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to come into a personal relationship with God. Certainly by watching my programs, that can help you. But I want you to get my book, Glorious Holy Spirit, just updated. Over 200 pages that will inspire you, give you information, and draw you into a deep, close, personal relationship with God. Whenever you purchase one of my books, it supports my TV programs. I also have partners who are supporting me. And would you consider becoming a partner with my ministry so that people everywhere can come into a personal relationship with God, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and know God in a deep personal way. Jesus died for you to have the Holy Spirit, and I want you to know this grace. Don't just live, live with passion. Discover your purpose. Be energized. Realize your potential. Live God's will. Father Cedric's books, DVDs, and CDs will inspire you to live passionately. Make a move right now and purchase these inspiring resources. Simply ask for the DVDs or CDs or ask for the book that was talked about. To order, simply call 844-FATHER-C. That's 844-328-4372. Or write us at Father Cedric Ministries, 430 Bunker Hill Road, Houston, Texas, 77024 or log on to www.frcedric.org.